Hello, my name is Guillermo Gallego, and in this video, we're going to take a look at two types of cameras, frame-based cameras and event-based cameras from a high-level point of view. It all starts with a question, how do we capture visual information? How do the cameras that we use for cinematography, the cameras that we use to shoot movies or the cameras in our phone work to acquire content such as videos, right? It turns out that we are capturing visual information in the same way that Muybridge invented it 140 years ago. So Muybridge was a photographer and uh, back then there was a debate in California whether when a horse was riding, it had all the four legs off the ground. So this was a task for Muybridge and it took him six years to come up with actual evidence. But you can see here on the second picture that yes, we could end the debate by showing that when a horse was galloping, the four legs were at some point off the ground. So what Muybridge invented was um, a triggering device that would capture an image after the other. So he had multiple cameras and each camera will take a picture and they were all spaced in time with a clock, right? So there was a trigger that was taking uh, pictures with different cameras at different points in time. The results are the different images that you see on this slide. So he not only invented a, a way to freeze time using these snapshots uh, and therefore create a sequence of images, but he also invented a way to play them again. And that's what we see in this video. So if you play this sequence of images or snapshots one after the other at a at the rate that it's high enough, then it gives us the impression of motion, even though we know there is a big gap between each of these images. Well, this was at the end of the 19th century. If we now move to the end of the 20th century, then Misha, Mahowald and Carver Mead, they designed or invented a new way of acquiring visual information. So Misha Mahowal, she was a biologist and she was studying at Carver Mead's lab in Caltech. Carver Mead was an engineer, he was designing chips. <clears throat> so what Misha Mahowal did is that she was bringing her knowledge in biology. She knew that uh, the, the eye and the human brain didn't work in the way that photographic cameras work and she wanted to change it. So she, as you can see um, in this middle picture, she was modeling um, neural structures in silicon. So she knew the, the function of uh, ganglion cells, the bipolar cells, the horizontal cells, different type of cells in the silicon, in the retina. And she tried to implement them on silicon. <clears throat> in 1991, well, the efforts uh, succeeded and then we had a cat view by this silicon reta, retina in the cover of Scientific American. And this was the beginning of a field called neuromorphic engineering. So what you see here on the bottom are the different pixels and each pixels ha have kind of the functionality um, inspired by the human retina. So the bipolar cells or um, some other adapted circuits. And we will play the video and you'll see that here we have the apparatus, the camera with the lens and it's acquiring a scene and uh, it's not acquiring a regular type of video as we know, instead it's using this, uh, replicating the human eye and generating these spikes of events. Only when the camera is moving or when the scene is moving, you see the actual um, things changing on the, on the monitor. So the actual output of the camera. I recommend you this video, which is a, a very good one, Silicon Vision about Misha Mahual and the beginnings of um, neuromorphic engineering. Okay, so if we now move uh, forward to 2014, here we see that we have in one uh, camera, um, one single device, two types of sensors. One is a frame-based sensor, so, um, which is like Muybridge sensor acquiring images, sequences of images, in this case kind of at six hertz, six frames per second. And we see a tennis player, this is Toby Dalbrook playing tennis. <clears throat> and we see a big gap between the different images and we also see in a minute another sensor, which is an event-based uh, sensor. 
and that's represented with these red and green dots. And what we see is that while the standard camera has kind of these snapshots in time, the event-based sensor that it was proposed uh, back then by Misha Mahowal um, is much more continuous in time. It's faster and it, it doesn't acquire motion in the way that we know it. We, we don't get output uh, from the camera in regions that are static. We mostly get the output from the camera in the things that are moving and we get this kind of strange output, only these red and green dots or spikes also called events which are the moving edges. So if we visualize this, uh, the output of this event camera in space-time, <clears throat> here we see the tennis player again, how it's hitting the ball. These are the frames and the events. And if we see, visualize the events in space-time, so we have to access X 240 pixels, Y 180 pixels, and then the axis that comes to us is time, 160 milliseconds. Then we see all these events, these dots that are continuously filling up space or space time. We see actually the trajectory of the ball. These are the output of the event-based sensor. And you can see here the color means uh, time, represents time, red means uh, closer in time and green means back in the past. So this is in, in a very high level what the two different type of outputs of the sensors are, right? Uh, Frame-based camera gives you frames that are equispaced in time, so at a given rate, and the event-based camera gives you uh, a sequence of uh, a stream of events that you can see here, all these uh, dots <coughs> that are represented in space-time in this clip. It's almost like they are capturing motion in a continuous way, but only looking at the things that actually move in the scene. The rest is not triggering any output. So if we look at the motivation between these cameras, then, well, these are, uh, these type of sensors are trying to come up with a new way of sensing, fundamentally in biological systems, and trying to address the efficiency latency trade-off. What is this trade-off? Well, there is a nice video by Innovation explaining this, that there are conventional cameras that are fast, but they may use a lot of energy. You can see here in the bottom right, and there are also uh, efficient sensors, but they might be slow. And these new type of event cameras called DBS, dynamic vision sensors, they try to increase the, the functionality, the, the capabilities of uh, visual sensors by addressing this power versus uh, speed trade-off. And they are doing it based on biological principles. This slide um, summarizes some of the things that uh, we will see in the course. And it's comparing two types of cameras. So in this column, you'll see um, the output of a standard camera, and it's actually looking through uh, a window inside an office through a window and it's moving at high speed and then you see this motion blur and the same scene is on the right um, viewed by an event camera and these are the red and um, green or in this case blue dots and they are accumulated in some milliseconds remember that the event camera gives some space-time output just for comparison so in some sense these two sensors are complementary because we see that um, the disadvantages of one are kind of the advantages of the other one, in some sense. So, the standard cameras, they have uh, a low output, uh, low update rate. So, if you want it fast, then you have to spend a lot more energy. Whereas, the event cameras, it's an asynchronous sensor and it has a very high update rate, very efficient. The dynamic range of standard cameras is limited, whereas the one by event-based cameras, it's much higher, several orders of magnitude higher. Uh, as you can see here in the picture, frame-based cameras suffer from motion blur, where this is uh, not so much the case for event-based cameras because they are much faster. However, the output <coughs> of uh, the sensor of the event camera is not as familiar as we are used to with uh, photographic output, right, like images. So standard cameras gives us absolute intensity, which is something familiar and we are used to. Um, whereas event-based cameras, they don't directly give it, but 
we can reconstruct it with some effort, with some algorithm. And in some sense, uh, frame-based cameras have been developed quite a lot, so there are mature algorithms for that. And event-based cameras, they are relatively new, so there are not too many event uh, algorithms designed for this type of sensors. And in the, in, during the course, we will study these two types of sensors, mostly introducing the new type, which is event-based camera. I guess almost everyone knows uh, a video camera. And some references. Um, so if you want to read more, here I give you the, for reading, I, I recommend Mead and Mahowald, this 100, um, 1991 paper on Scientific America called the Silicon Retina. Uh, if curious, you can also read about Newbridge on the early motion, uh, motion studies and the devices that he created. And in videos, I recommend these two, one about uh, Misha Mahowald, uh, and the other one about uh, Newbridge. Um, I think that's it. Thank you very much.